Today, as we know, that is the day of Muhammad Sahib's birth. And we have to understand that all these incarnations came at different times. They all came at different times. And they came as a continuous process of evolution of life. No question of conflict or anything in that. No question. You see, human beings can't understand. Because they create conflict, they are hidden conflict. This thing, closing down. So they just came on this earth, nobody's property. They came as incarnations on this earth, all of them. He came after Christ. See his position. Because Christ came as an incarnation, which was the Son God, the Son aspect of God. And he taught forgiveness. And the Christian doctrine, doctrine has called it the suffering, that the Christians must suffer. So all those Christians must suffer, you see, this sort of a thing just branded on you. Then anybody kills you, you should accept killing. Anybody wants to hurt you, you must accept. You must suffer. Even if you don't suffer, you should inflict suffering on yourself. This funny doctrine, you see, Everybody was surprised. From where did they get it? Christ did not suffer. He cannot suffer. How can they suffer? If he could suffer, then how was he the son of God? He could not. It was just a trump. Actually, his message was resurrection. But the Christians started using it as a suffering. So they said, Oh God, now what to do? So we have to send somebody else. Now whom do we send? Someone who will be able to teach them. That's not something. You have to defend. You have to fight it. How dare they make you suffer? Like I'll tell you somebody from Muktananda had come to my program. Horrible fellow he was saying. He came and he started saying all kinds of things there. So the surge of his got angry, you know, Modi and all that. He said, he'll beat you. He started saying, oh, you are like this, you are like that. He said, you don't say it to your mother, otherwise we'll beat you. He said, you are surge of his. And you should bear it. He said, jolly will, they'll bury you out. Throw him out. I said, just now, and give him two cakes. Just tell you throw him out. We need it. If you had said anything to Christ's mother, you would have taken the same cross and hit all of them nicely. That's why it was arranged that nothing should be said about Christ's mother, because that would be the sensitive point. On that point, he would never have compromised. So this foolish idea that all these religious people should suffer. And then why the religion? Why should you have the religion? I mean, if you have to, have sufferings on account of religion. Better not have such a horrible religion. You see, it is like purchasing <laughs> sufferings. No. Where did it say? I don't know. Where in the Bible they said that all the Christians must suffer? <coughs> I don't know what point you get from where. Uh, G- G- it is reported in the Bible that Jesus said to a young man, if you want to follow me, take your cross or something like that. All right, that doesn't mean that you suffer. If you want to follow me, take your cross. Now what is cross? You know, is a symbol of innocence. I say take your cross, because you see, if you are coming here, as you are, you are to be molded, you are to be brought to the proper balance. So you little bit suffer. When you t- try to test others' vibrations, you do get a little bit of that burning and all that. But not the way you see we have understood to carry our crosses. Now, what is your cross? I mean, absurd. I tell you, whole understanding is so absurd. 
See, you make such a great personality into nothing, absolutely. You see, he came here to teach you to suffer. I mean, can you think of such a thing? I mean, I don't know what brains and what intelligence all your these great priests are using to say that he came here to teach you to suffer. They probably have trouble with their liver and they should make Huh? They are what? They probably have trouble with their liver and they feel naturally miserable, so they get into the situation. No, no, but... The preaching is that you must suffer. Oh, yeah. I went to... Uh, now, even if you take, like they say, position, you can say that it was that, that if anybody says to you, just don't bother about it. Just don't bother. But why suffer? But Suffering means that you bother about it. Otherwise, you just don't bother. I think it's just a rationalization of impotency. I think it's like that. Because they were unable to do anything. The priests were unable. They were seeing people suffering around, and, and they, they were not worry. able to help them. Then they said to them, accept your suffering and enjoy it. I think... Uh, I enjoy the suffering. But in the absurd doctrine of suffering. The original doctrine is that you should offer whichever sufferings to God. And then it got twisted out that you, know, you have to feel miserable. But the original idea was... Suffering was like tapas or something like that. That whatever Tapa. suffering Tapa. comes to you, you, you have to accept it and offer it to God. I mean, some people do still teach the, the, the right thing, but most people just think they have to feel miserable. You see, it is, I mean, it shouldn't say even offering or anything. You see, it's God's name. It's a bath. Mm. You see, you have pain in the stomach when you put hand towards me, suppose. You get all right. Now, what are you offering to me? I'm not getting <laughs> anything. It's just a different thing altogether. You see, suffering and God are two different things. God is the one who bombs yourself. What is that when he said, Sam? Let's say you suffer. Where, which one is such a great thing that such a big doctrine has come out from? Where I don't know that we all should suffer. It is all the time promised. Even those who are suffering will be uh, blessed are those. But there was no actualization of the promise until now. Yeah, well, if, you, if you wouldn't have come, okay, and we why are suffering. Why would I have come? Okay, I mean, why let's say one you know, life so, earlier. So supposing that you had not come. No, let's say one life we earlier. We would not have understood what Christ was about. We are suffering because there is a mess around. <laughs> the only way we can bear it, we don't see any issue. The only way we can bear it is in thinking that our suffering has a meaning. And the only way we can think our suffering has a meaning is the in thinking that... The simple meaning is because of your mistakes you are suffering. And that does not help. <laughs> it's a very simple thing, you know. It's yeah. very, very simple. You, human beings, put them on one side, God on another side, all right? You cut each other's throats. God has told you to cut each other's throats. If there is war, then who? God has created war. Physically also, if you neglect yourself, you do all kinds of things, then you suffer. Who has asked you to read so many books? Who has asked you, first of all, to create so many books? What do you know to create so many books? That's it. So you see, you are doing it. So you face it also here. Did God ask you to write so many books and read them and condition yourself? Who has asked you to listen to Freud? <laughs> but inside you, he is all the time talking and telling you. Not that he is giving you up. He is all the time guiding you. Only thing you should have done is to accept his advice. All the time he is telling you it's wrong, it's too much you are doing. You can even see your ego, what more do you want to see? Now you know your horse is being a fast one. So why not make it a little more? All these things, the way you are with yourself, with somebody. Now, this girl has her husband has medical help. 
you think was committing the accident? Did God tell him you go and commit accident? He must be going somewhere in a hurry. He must go. So he commits the accident. Human beings have created everything. Even the boots and all those have been created by human beings. God has not created them. All this is the creation of human beings. God has created joy, happiness. All the beauty of the world is at your feet. Such beauty. Imagine a small little tree or you see a small little seed you see. Anything you see in yourself, your eyes only if you watch, you want to see other writers go. Even if you go to so many colors. How oh, everything is dark for you to see. Here you are taking one knife and putting it inside and you see to see dark suffering. So who has asked you? It's like that. Whether collectively or individually. God is not responsible for that. You see, it's like a mother who has cooked everything nicely for you, made everything nice for you. Come down now for the food. Here she finds her children coming home, all wounded, <laughs> all famished, finished. She has created beautiful things Absolutely. And he wants you to sit there and enjoy that joy. That's why he has created you such a frustration. <laughs> such a frustration. You can make out a person who is cruel, but you want to go to such a person, spoil yourself, and then you say you are miserable. You give so much importance to human beings. It's only you who is. If there is Hitler, Hitler cannot be there unless and until there were German soul. Help him. Without the Germans, do you think Hitler could have existed? Same here. You elect your people who are very dominating, sometimes who are possessed. They become your prime ministers, supposing. Now what do you do? It's left to you. So if you don't want, you can have good people. Will you put any saint there? No, you say it's not practical. Nobody would accept a saint. You see, anyone. Like that Makriya's horrible fellow. You call him as the head of the church there. I mean, how could he be there? In India, they appoint these Shankaracharyas, horrible, useless things, good for nothing. You see, they cannot be even used as footballs, I tell you, they are so useless. <laughs> and people are making for them, you know, golden umbrellas. On top they want to have uh, diamonds and things. And if they go up, about in the market, people will think there is a coolie going on. Uh, one who is carrying the luggage is also called a coolie in India. Yeah. Yes, in porter. There is a porter going on. And they want to have a crown because you see they look like that, such miserable creatures. So they want to have a crown of gold, and they want to have a big umbrella of gold made of um, gold. You see, and the umbrella will fall down on them. So they must have a shield also <laughs> to protect them. Such miserable, horrid people. They become the heads of the churches and heads of the organizations. It is you. And why the good say we must suffer? So it's all right, let it go. So what prospers is the man. Is the evil. No more of suffering for sins. Had enough of it. Sounds good. Yeah? Right. Absolutely.
Nobody dare touch a saint now. That's it. Had enough of it. The Christ was all right. He never suffered. But he relieved everybody's suffering. He doesn't suffer. I don't suffer. Neither you are going to suffer now. In the name of God, you are not going to suffer. Let's see now who makes you suffer. Unless and until you are addicted to it, then I can't help you. Want to have suffering, then go ahead. But if you want to have joy, you will have it. And nobody can take it away. Those who try will suffer. Those who go against you will suffer. This is Krishna's style, or we can say Mohammed's style, because today is his birthday. So to understand him in the right perspective, you see, after Christ it was such a fiasco, you see, that they had to come to say that you are not to suffer. Now they suffer. Even his grandsons who were, you know, reborn from Mahavir and Buddha, they came to teach the non-violence of the nonsense that's going on. To stop that, no, there is a non-violence of God, which is violence. It's just killing. They need little killing. Nice. And sometimes a big one too. They will have it. So the idea is that we should not be a military force. Why not? We are the greatest military force. Here you will see onward Christian soldiers. Now how can you be the soldiers be suffering? You are soldiers, you are endowed with powers of all the Almighty. And how dare you suffer? To the wrong idea. You have not taken anything in. All right, like a gentleman, you see, like an elephant when he walks in the docks and parking, it doesn't bother. But in its greatness, not in suffering, it just goes on like that. Like that. You are not to bother about these bickerings and all the nonsense. You are not to come down on your knees. But no suffering. No suffering. This is the message of Muhammad. But Muslims, oh God, his enemies became Muslims, I can tell you this much. The way they are. The way they are treating him, you can see that they were his enemies. The first and foremost thing that he has said is that all of them are prophets. They have come at different times. He said, don't drink, because he saw Christ didn't impress too much on the drinking, so that's what they have said. They find a fruitful everywhere. You see, now I'm saying every, so many things. But maybe I may leave one or two points here and there. I'm trying to cover up. You see, that's why I talk, 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 talk. Nothing should be left out. Because we'll catch hold of that part. <coughs> I'll get on to that. He came down and he said, don't drink. Muslims are drinking the most. Christ said, don't go near the spirits. So in the church, you will have graveyards. In the church only, you will have graveyards. See the wonderful part of it. He said, don't go near the dead. You have nothing to do with the dead. 